The dilemma is 80% of individuals and teams are not achieving their full potential. And we all know that China has come a long way. But did you know that happiness can actually help you to become successful? That's exactly why I quit my corporate job because I found my purpose in life and started my own company. So basically, we need to go back to the company culture. This is like the foundation. We need to make the company culture strong. And then it's all about the leaders. Because if the leaders are not living our newest values, are not living the programs on how we want to boost um, employee engagement or increase the well-being of employees at workplace, then everything was for nothing. And especially in China, the leaders are even more important compared to some flatter hierarchies and companies and, for example, startups or um, American companies. So we really need to train the leaders well because they are the ambassadors. If they're not on our side, nothing's going to work out. I mean, not only in China, right? So yeah, work on your company culture, work on your leadership, have different kind of well-being programs. And then the, it, it takes some time to measure it and to implement it. But the very important is the employees are really like encouraged to use these programs. So yeah, as I said, it takes a little bit of time, but you also will be able to measure it. So have some patience and see the results. Can you give an example? Yeah. So um, let's talk about uh, one of my sustainable um, entrepreneur or like startups in Shanghai. So they have um, 10 employees and every one of them was from a different country. So Indonesian founder, we had a Peruvian, a Dutch, a Brazilian, a Chinese, a German, American. So super multinational. Yeah, like different kind of ages. First of all, what we did is with the team together. We analyzed their personality types, MBTI, the 16 personalities. We also like, it's all about self-awareness first. We worked on uh, what are their saboteurs, how they actually self-sabotage themselves. So it's not only knowing about their strengths, but also their weaknesses. And for the founder, it's the same. So there was transparency at the whole time. We did a couple of workshops together where with the team together, we wanted to explore what do you want to see in the company? How do you feel valued? What makes you feel happy or appreciated? So they were able to come up with their own ideas. And then together, not just with the founder, we implemented um, a strategy, a plan. Beyond this, we also started to work one-on-one uh, -on -one with the founders because the leadership style needed to be adjusted. So um, we really worked out how can we um, create a leadership style that is not just fitting to different cultures and you may know the situational leadership style, but at the same time also according to different generations, there are MBTI styles and so on. So we created an authentic leadership style for um, the founder, but also he then tried out how to lead best each of his employees, which was super interesting. And then, as I mentioned, we just had to integrate of what together we worked out um, when it comes to um, employee engagement, how to increase well-being, and so on. State-owned companies have a very hierarchical way of leading, as well as if you go to Japan. So you do what the boss tells you to do. You do not disagree. But at the same time, going back to um, the, the study or like the education, who founded um, the education system? A lot of rational um, men, basically, if we want to say the same in Germany, right? So, um, but in China, like people or students are not that much encouraged to think independently. What's your idea? What's your opinion? We in the Western world are raised like this. So they're more basically um, trained to, it's a lot about like um, harmony, and a balance inside the company. You don't want to disagree. You don't want to make anybody lose face because of the idea that you have. But sometimes it's just okay to not and to do what you're being asked to do. What I find very interesting here, what I've seen is sometimes if a manager leaves, he takes his whole team with him to the new company. Because feedback is like not openly communicated compared to our countries. So sometimes they might not even be aware that there's a lot of like unhappiness, uh, dissatisfaction inside a team. Is that a good thing? 
I don't want to say good or bad. I mean, if you suddenly lose like 10 or 15 people, it would definitely hurt the company, right? But I mean, we in the Western world and as a, as a coach and trainer, I give a lot of leadership and communication trainings because communication is the foundation for everything. And if there is no feedback culture, and again, this goes back to culture, you need a culture of creativity. Uh, if you want to reinvent um, your companies, you need a culture of well-being. Um, but there needs to be something um, in place in the culture. And there needs to be feedback culture. That's what we Western people think. Because if you don't get feedback, I mean, how would the the, the bosses, the the C levels know that something is wrong and inside our company if the employees are not allowed or not yeah able to speak up? Another thing that um, we sometimes do is we love to have team building events. Um, in China, very often under team building events, they just think about let's have dinner and drinks, baijiu drinking. A lot of people might not be able to um, drink that much alcohol, but you know that this is a very good way where you can really dig deep down into a person. And a lot of like people who are drunk or tipsy might be able to um, tell the truth, or maybe they may tell the truth, again, not the boss, but maybe this trusted colleague who might be your eyes and your ears. Um, when I give trainings, another thing that I usually do is um, I, it's my responsibility to create the safe space. So to create the trust, to make sure that they feel safe. This is about psychological safety, that whatever issue they had during COVID times, for example, what happened maybe during in the family, not just in the job, that they can say it out loud. And we, as a trainer coming from external, might have a little bit they might give us a bit more trust to open up at the same time. But it's important that we're not able to say what's happening in there. But um, we can work on specific issues with them. So um, they might be able to say specific things out loud because we're an external person. Mm. But when the important is, it has to be like equal the level of people. Once there is a boss, a manager in sight, you don't get the same quality of answers. I give an example. So I give a lot of positive intelligence coachings and trainings to basically weaken people's um, sabotages and the saboteurs, like the negative mindset, and boost the positive mindset, how they can increase creativity, um, unlock more of their potential, use more empathy, and so on. And I, I worked with a German automotive company in Shanghai. What I did not know, and it hurt me a lot, because the quality of the whole one-day training suffered. I had two German managers and um, maybe 10 Chinese staff, different departments. But we were supposed to create self-awareness. We were supposed to like open them up to create awareness like, what's your weakness? And this is not about pointing fingers, uh, saying you, you fail, you suck. No, it's about first we need to know our self-sabotage, our saboteurs, and we all have them. This is not about judging because otherwise we cannot change something about it, right? But if the managers are there, I barely got them to open up. I mean, on the spot, I had to like do different things, but you see the hierarchies and the, and the, the, the management levels and the managers and the employees, there, there can be a big conflict. But this is where we as skilled trainers are supposed to bring in different tools. Mm. In China, we love to scan QR codes, right? And then you have an anonymous survey or you anonymously like give your answers. You upload it in the cloud, for example. Or just like randomly, you have like sticky notes and people can like randomly give it to you. So it is anonymous. There's a lot of different techniques that you can use. Um, because uh, you were probably just mentioning not just different cultures, but also extroverted and introverted people. We have them in every company. And the power of the introverts very often is not fully utilized. Remember, 80% of companies or individuals are not unlocking their full potential, not achieving it because of maybe introverts are feeling shy next to the extroverted people, whatever is blocking them to speak up. That's why these people need different techniques to make their voice 
hurt. If you love the Panda Profits and you watch this channel, please show some panda love and become a part of the growing number of viewers on this channel that have hit that subscribe button. It helps a lot and the bigger the channel, the bigger the gets.